Uh, good evening, everybody. I, uh, I hope you can all hear me. I uh, want to welcome you all to the City Arts Virtual Gala. It's wonderful to be with you all. Uh, my name is Tim Halpern. I'm coming to you tonight from uh, my beach home in Charleston, South Carolina, but I'm a New Yorker, uh, born and bred, lived in Soho for many years of my life, and I just want to thank you all so much for being with us tonight and, and give you a sense of what we're going to do tonight. What we're going to do tonight is, is, is raise $180,000 to help the wonderful children of City Arts that um, our wonderful impresario, uh, CP, has, has, has gathered us all to, to, to help with. So the structure of the night is we're going to have some wonderful honorees that you all know about, uh, some surprises along the way. Um, myself, I was uh, charged with uh, uh, just lightening up the room a little bit and, and just adding a little levity. So uh, I do want to just begin the night by saying, um, uh, yes. if everyone can hear me or as much as you can. I can hear you. Great. Well, so, 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 uh, so welcome. So, so uh, my name is Tim Halper and I just want to uh, welcome some of our, some of our guests and you know, it's, it's a challenging time in the city, right? Because the city is finally just uh, beginning to open up again. It's, it's a, big, a big week in New York. And um, we just had Father's Day. Uh, Father's Day was very exciting in my house. I asked my teenage daughter to pretend I was funny all day. And she said, uh, Dad, I'm an A-plus student, not a miracle worker. So, yeah, good, good luck with that. Um, my kids are uh, terrified. It's day 96 of... Uh, of COVID, right? So my children are not sure what's worse, a pandemic or dad's jokes. I guess the City Arts crowd will be the judge of that. Uh, no, but it is great to be here. This is a big week in New York. The city is slowly reopening. How exciting. You know, I can't wait to get back to the good old days. I, I miss so many things. I, I miss Joe's Pizza on Bleecker Street. I'm just dying to get a slice of Joe's Pizza. You know, I'm, I'm just hungry for some food, really. Uh, just just dying for some great New York food. I, I want to know if we can't just get back to the good old days, you know, order in some, some Chinese food, uh, you know, have some Coronas, put on Batman, something, because this COVID stuff has got to end. And, and that's really what we're here tonight. We're here to have a great time. I've got myself a nice glass of uh, a wine. I hope you're going to raise a glass tonight and have some fun with me. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, a little bit about our, our impresario tonight, um, uh, C.P. Ben Hamin, who strongly believes that when kids create, they do not destroy. And you can see in the background two of the wonderful kids we have from, from City Arts. And City Arts makes incredible murals all, all around, around, uh, around New York City, which we're going to go into in some detail. But before we do, um, C.P. is an incredible inspiration, a wonderful impresario, and uh, said to me tonight, uh, Tim, you're going to be the MC. You can be funny, but don't be too funny. And I said, CP, there is no risk of that. Don't worry. So, but it's wonderful to be here. And let me tell you about City Arts. Um, City Arts has been led with a vision by, by CP Benjamin since 1989. City Arts, we have created and produced over 330 murals. Uh, our city is more beautiful. Our city is inspired. And these children are using their time, and we, the public, are the grateful beneficiaries. But we need your help. Uh, we have $180,000 to raise so that we can create some six projects in 2021, which are going to be similar to projects you may have heard of. You may be familiar with the Stepping Up program at Hamilton Grange Middle School, or the My Legacy program at Comp Sci High School in the Bronx, in the South Bronx, or a Bridge to Peace uh, in the Middle School for Art and Philosophy program or closer to home, the, the Soho Artist History Walk. I, uh, as I say, I live in Soho. Um, it's really an incredible place to live. I live right on the corner of Gap and Starbucks, uh, right next to uh, Armani. But, but seriously, but City Arts makes these incredible murals. You may have been on the Soho Artist History Walk, which is done in conjunction in Soho with uh, very important galleries like Paula Cooper, Leo Castelli, Ronald Feldman, and Barbara Gladstone. So let me tell you a little bit about our, our impact before we move on to, uh, to some of our honored guests that we will welcome tonight. Um, let me tell you about City Arts Impact and just 
bear with me here while I have a, a glass and, and put on my reading glasses. Did you know City Arts has served more than a thousand schools? More than a hundred thousand children have been impacted. 85% of the schools that the children are participating in through the City Arts murals have increased in attendance by virtue of the City Arts mural creation. And 99% of the murals that the children of City Arts have created have no graffiti. Throughout the world, City Arts has served more than 200,000 people and I encourage you to visit our peace walls where you can see, where you can see some of the wonderful work. Um, our honored guests tonight and people that we want to welcome. We are very privileged, privileged to be joined by uh, Mrs. Agnes Gund, who's been a City Arts supporter since Sippy founded the organization 31 years ago. Um, others are honorees and our honored guests tonight include Peg Alston, Christopher Worthley, who is the director of the Allianz of America Foundation, uh, Dr. Miriam Adelson, we're privileged she could join us, uh, Barbara Koppel, as well as um, astronaut uh, Leland Melvin, Fred Hayes, and some wonderful other honorees that are going to be with us tonight. And in addition to, uh, to CP, we are privileged to be joined by the City Arts Board, uh, Cindy Aprigliano, Orrin Cohen, Fran Schulman, Vera Sung, and Stephen Bitterman. So that is where we are at, at this point. I just wanna say a couple of remarks more before we bring up our, uh, our first guest. Um, I'm assuming that, uh, that you are aware of our first honoree who is Mark Morial. Mark Morial is the current president and CEO of the National Urban League, the nation's largest historic civil rights and urban advocacy organization. The Urban League is 110 years old and is an incredible organization. But let me tell you about first um, Mr. Morial or the Honorable Mark Morial's mayoral term in New Orleans. This was an incredible era for the Big Easy. Uh, during Mark Morial's uh, time as the youngest mayor in the history of New Orleans. Crime dropped dramatically. Policing was reformed. Ownership of businesses by African Americans greatly increased. Tourism was an all-time high. And you may not know this, but did you know that the Honorable Mayor Morial was instrumental in creation of the Essence Music Festival, the largest African American cultural festival in the United States. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to um, Honorable Mark Morial, who I hope is ready to join us. Hey, I'll raise my glass to you tonight, although it is a glass of only water. I have no wine, but uh, it's great to be with everyone uh, this evening. And I certainly want to thank all the supporters uh, of City Arts. And really tonight, uh, keep in mind and keep uh, really put at the top of our concerns. And certainly our admiration is for the young people, the children, the talented children who through this program are given an opportunity uh, to display their talents so that millions of people on the streets of New York City uh, are able to see them. Uh, I uh, believe so strongly uh, in public art uh, and in its role in interpreting history, its role in uh, lifting up the visions that people have of the communities that they live in, uh, and just believe that this program just matches so many assets. It matches uh, the power of schools, the power of artists, the power of children, uh, and the power of public spaces uh, in, in New York City, but it could be in any urban community across the nation. So I want to salute uh, what, this, uh, what this initiative really means. During my time uh, leading the city of New Orleans, we put a tremendous emphasis on building and leveraging the city's culture. New Orleans is a city of art, music, history, uh, and architecture, uh, we sought to really operationalize it through, uh, through our summer programs. So we brought art and culture into the summer programming that the city created. One of the legacies is the Louis Armstrong Jazz Camp, uh, which helps young aspiring musicians learn jazz music at the knee of and with the support of and with the tutorship and mentorship of some of the great jazz artists through an artist in residence program. And so I view art in its broadest sense. Uh, it is the visual arts, it's the lively arts, it's sculpture, it's music, it's all of the above. And I think that uh, when, we, when we invest in art and we invest in children's capabilities to find the talent from within, uh, we, are, we are investing 
in as important a way as when we invest in reading and writing and, and arithmetic, the traditional elements of education. Uh, I think that young people who have an appreciation of art uh, become people who have a great appreciation for family, a great appreciation for people, great appreciation for nature, a great compassion uh, for those uh, who may be locked out and left out. I think these values uh, can, be, uh, can be created uh, through art. So tonight, I really want to salute uh, to the, trem the tremendous work that City Art uh, is doing, encourage everyone's support and everyone's contributions. And remember, it is about the children. Uh, and in these times, I think it's going to be so important to see how children e interpret the events of these times, the new movement uh, that is taking place uh, for justice in this country, uh, how young people see that through their eyes and how they express it in art. And in expressing it in art, they'll express the pain, they'll express the suffering, but they'll express the hope and the aspirations. One of the things we did uh, when I was inaugurated as mayor of New Orleans some 25 years ago, uh, we held a contest. Uh, and we held a contest, an art contest for children from the schools of New Orleans. What I remember is at the time the city was experiencing some 500 murders a year. I tried 500 murders a year. There's tremendous violence, uh, tremendous drive-by shootings and uh, pain in the community. These young people uh, who, who depicted what they saw in their communities, not only depicted the violence, but they depicted the world as they imagined it. The world that was free, the world that was peaceful, the world where people loved each other. So we give children a chance and they will show us the way, they will teach us the way. They will demonstrate a vision for a better world, better cities, a better nation, and better communities. So again, I wanna thank everyone. Oops, this is turned wrong. It's an equal sign. Now we hear you. It's an equal sign. Uh, uh, so we wanna thank you for, for tonight. And, and, and uh, we at the National Urban League, who work with young people all the time, support greatly uh, what you do. Have an incredible gala. Uh, hope you exceed your fundraising goals, uh, and uh, I'll drop my contribution uh, in the mail uh, to support this work also. So thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank you, Mr. Morial, who's doing an incredible job at the Urban League. We have a wonderful video that we want to play for you, and we hope, uh, Mr. Morial, that you could stick around for a minute or two because we have some okay. questions from some of the kids. Yeah, absolutely. So, Ben, if you would uh, cue up the Imagine video, please. Give us a minute, folks. We have a wonderful piece for you to see. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Morial for making a great city. I've been to New Orleans. That's where I adopted my dog. I found my dog up on the uh, Lake Poncha uh, train in the Charles District. I found him on the street. He was uh, Imagine waking up as a young child and seeing this every day. Now, imagine being part of making it all beautiful again. The artist did not just teach us to paint, he taught us to work together and help one another. Seeing something you created come to life for all to see. What a proud moment for a child. It has made me think about things other than myself. These kids matter. City Arts gave me purpose to come to school. I wanted to finish my creation. For over 30 years, City Arts, empowering, educating, and connecting youth and children to each other locally and around the world, teaching them to become active participants in realizing their potential and transforming communities. You can help us by volunteering, by joining our murals, or simply giving us funds. Remember, when kids create, they do not destroy. That's right. That was uh, really beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, Mark, the question from the, from the children who are, who are listening to us globally, the kids want to know, in New Orleans or in your leadership of the Urban League, can, can youth affect real change in the world and can they do it through artwork? They can do it through art as a part of change. There's no singular way that you can bring about change. But if you think of artists, 
in the 1960s in both the civil rights movement and in the anti-war movement. The way artists gave expression and amplified messages in a very profound way, how musicians in the 1960s and the 1970s, uh, in effect, uh, uh, created protest music. Music which was not just about enjoyment, but music indeed with a message. There's no doubt that things can be changed through art, through the visual arts, uh, through, through music, and through various ways. But one thing that, that uh, the video you demonstrated uh, showed us just before this, uh, it said something that I really, really like, and that is that through uh, city arts and through uh, many elements of art, people can learn to work together. Uh, often one may think of an artist as an individual, but many art projects, many uh, murals certainly, require the work of a team and the ability of people to work together and change social and economic change in, in, a, in this world requires collective action. No one person. We think about a Nelson Mandela as a great change agent. Well, Nelson Mandela was part of a movement. He was the leader of a movement. He was the leader of a movement for justice and reconciliation in South Africa. You think about Martin Luther King. And we may think of him as a singular person. He was part of a movement. He had many, 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 many collaborators, supporters, staff people, uh, others who assisted in his work. Uh, indeed, to the extent that art teaches collective work and collective teamwork and collective creative thinking, then art can be an element of change. That's really beautiful, Mark. We appreciate it. And if I'm not mistaken, the Marsalis brothers' uh, legacy began in New Orleans. So as much as they are contributors to, to New York's vibrant cultural life, they're from the Big Easy. Am I correct? Branford and Winton and all of the brothers and their father, the late Ellis Marsalis, who just died about six weeks ago, mm. uh, New Orleanians. Harry Connick is a New Orleanian. Terrence Blanchard is a New Orleanian. John Baptiste, who's on the Stephen Colbert show and his incredible musical family in New Orleanians, uh, as, 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 as were greats like Buddy Bolden and Louis Armstrong and Jelly Roll Martin and uh, Louis Prima uh, and, uh, and Kid Ory. And I could continue. Uh, Lil Wayne and the Cash Money uh, guys, Mahalia Jackson. We have musicians and artists from New Orleans from all genres, all generations, all races, all backgrounds, all orientations and dispositions. So yeah, the Marsalis brothers make us proud because they are naturally New Orleans. And like any great leader, we are lucky, whether it's Nelson Mandela or Mark Morial, New Orleans' loss is New York City's gain. So we are really pleased to have Mark Morial here in New York City and, and New Orleans. He'll post back up at you when he can. Thank you. God Thank bless. you so much. Have a great evening. Welcome, Thanks for having Mark. me. You're, God bless. You're, st stick around, Mr. Mayor. We'd love to have you. Um, our next, our next honored guest is um, is Bernard Wiggins. I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, Bernard Wiggins. He's a city arts uh, kid now, a man that Sippy met in, in Red Hook, Brooklyn, when he was 12 years old, working on the Dream Girls project. But at this point, um, uh, Bernard Wiggins is a uh, a Murray Hill Academy High School teacher uh, and a city arts artist. So. We'd like to share an inspirational video from Bernard Wiggins, please. Bear with us. Hello, everyone. My name is Bernard Wiggins. I've been working with Mississippi and City Arts for the past two years now. Uh, I've known Mississippi for about 29 years, and uh, we originally worked on a mural called The Dream Grows in Brooklyn in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Uh, right now, we're doing uh, Windows to the Future, which is six individual windows, each with its own theme. And we've been working with the Murray Hill Academy High School in Manhattan and Daniel uh, with Daniel Geek, their professor. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to say that um, I'm very honored to be working with Mississippi after all these years because now I'm seeing uh, art from both sides of 
the spectrum as once a, a kid who needed an art outlet and now as an instructor who is basically leading these kids to create great pieces that they can leave behind as a legacy in their school. So um, thank you again, Miss Hippie, and I hope all is well and I hope everyone's staying safe during this quarantine. Thank you so much, um, Bernard. That was really, really beautiful and thoughtful. And I, before we move on, I, I do want to tell you that part of our, our challenge and our mission tonight is we're, we're trying to raise money for these, for these wonderful programs. So I want to call your attention to a, a couple of different web links, which you may be aware of. There's a, a website at artsy.net, artsy.net. And here on artsy.net, you will see some wonderful items that we have to auction off. Um, and and uh, City Arts will be the beneficiary, including uh, a print from Christo. Unfortunately, uh, the late, great Christo, who wrapped Central Park, has uh, sadly passed away in the last few weeks. But he was a dear friend of, uh, of, of uh, CP and her husband for many, many years. He's got a wonderful print there. For, for a mere $8,000. And last time I checked, we were at $70,000. So we're $110,000 short of our goal, but I know that we're gonna get there tonight um, with your help. The, the Artsy um, web auction link will be running live for the next couple of days. On the other hand, there's something called the Acela uh, Events Gala auction link. And here you can find some wonderful opportunities for some trips to, to, to faraway places like Grenadines. Now look, COVID's not over yet, but but it's going to be soon. And when you when you get an opportunity to visit uh, the Grenadines or uh, Boqueta, Panama, Los Establos Inn, please visit the Acela.com uh, website where we have opening bids of five hundred dollars. But I know we can do better than that, and I know that we will we will do do better than that. Um, and I do want to tell you before I introduce our next guest. You remember remember the old days. Um, back when we used to go out, remember when we used to go out? So I'm in this uh, art gallery in Chelsea and there was a woman staring at a blank canvas. It was, it, it was completely empty. So she asked the dealer, uh, how much? And he said, well, it's uh, $500,000. And she said, well, it's, uh, it's really something. No, it's actually nothing. It's blank. It's a blank canvas. It's nothing. That half a million dollars pales in comparison to the very, very affordable, wonderful print from Christo for $8,000. So please visit our, our website at Artsy. Now, our next honored guest is a wonderful young lady I'm going to tell you all about. And we have some music from her. Uh, bear with me here, folks. Um, we have uh, Isabel um, Martinez. And let me tell you about her. Uh, Isabel is um, a student at Jericho Middle School out on Long Island. She's going to be playing some wonderful Reverie by WC, and her teacher is Jose Alvarez, and we're very excited to have Isabella Martinez with us. So if you stand by, we have some great music for you. <laughs> have been all the wonderful piece that we have from Isabella Martinez. Am I correct? I think so. That was wonderful. I'd like to give a hand to Isabella Martinez if she's listening tonight. Thank you so much, Isabella. That was beautiful and it was perfect because we would have loved to have heard more. Unfortunately, we have to keep things moving along. I do want to say on a personal note, my, uh, my wife went to Jericho Middle School and I don't know if you ever heard this expression. Do you know the expression, a uh, happy wife, happy life? Have you heard this? You know where that comes from? Uh, nothing rhymes with husband. No, except um, uh, has been, uh, busted, useless, you know, those things. Yeah. Okay. So, so moving, moving right along, uh, folks, I, I want to tell you about our, our next uh, honorees. 
Um, you may be familiar as I am with uh, Rito and Walda Faulkner. Um, the Faulkners are, are eminent arts educators and artist advocates. Uh, they've been members of the MoMA Friends, the Education Committee for over 15 years, where they have collaborated to highlight significant African-American artists in MoMA's exhibitions and their own collection. Um, uh, Rita Faulkner is a fashion designer and Waldo is an attorney, and they've really increased the attendance of African-American visitors to MoMA by expanding its collection. And so it's critically important at this moment that we remember the contributions of African-American artists and the Faulkners have very, very much been central to that effort. Uh, artists whose works have been exhibited at MoMA through their efforts uh, include uh, Roy de Carava, Jacob Lawrence, and Charles White, amongst a great many others. Uh, perhaps someday some young city artists will be blessed to have the Faulkners help their work gain residency at MoMA or elsewhere. And as a final note, this is an historically important American family. Waldo's father, by the way, served as a city council member in public service and was honored in 2002 by having a pre-K and elementary school in Greensboro, North Carolina, named after him as the Waldo C. Faulkner Elementary School. So won't you please give me a lovely, warm city arts welcome to Rita and Waldo Faulkner. Hello, are the Faulkners with us or? Okay. Oh, did we go ahead? Go ahead. Hi, I'm Rita Faulkner. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Rita. Okay, okay. About sorry about that. Um, and I'm Waldo Faulkner. We want to thank City Arts for honoring us under this amazing direction of Sippy Ben Amin. City Arts is an organization which encourages artistic expression by young people in New York City. And may I add, at this time, it is important for teenagers to have that outlet. We wanted to thank uh, especially uh, Eleanor uh, Flamenhaf who introduced us to the City Arts Program. Uh, she is a wonderful person, uh, an ex-gallery owner, and an art enthusiast. I wanted to give a little shout out to my sister, uh, Margaret DeLorme, who just had surgery this morning. Uh, she, when she taught school in the, in the city of Washington, uh, she incorporated art in her program for the first, second, and third graders and got, uh, had very good uh, success with that program. Uh, you've already mentioned the Friends of Education and suffice it to say that the Friends of Education, which has been around for many years now, has been very influential in helping MoMA, guiding MoMA in its collection of art by African-American artists. And we're so proud uh, of all the work that we've done there. And when I say we, I'm talking about the committee and not just reading me, just the whole committee. The next person I'd like to mention is Frederick Hayes. We chose Frederick Hayes to do an art piece for us for this event. And I'll hold that up. I wanna call it the artistic brick, which is maybe foundational for a building, maybe symbolically. And I wanna thank Fred, and hopefully he is watching tonight, and I want to thank him very much for working with us. Last but not least, as Rita said, and as Mark Mario said so eloquently, it's the children. It's all about the children. Uh, it's not about us. We, we've had our time. But it's about the kids who are coming along now. And they, are, they have an opportunity now to liven up the city and to show us exactly what the spirit of New York can be like. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you. Thank you. You're, 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 you're most welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Rita and Waldo Faulkner. 
And it's critically important what they said, because remember, it's all about the children. It's about the young artists. And the social justice movement, while an important part of the equation, is only one part of the equation. We also have to have the next generation of young people that are making beautiful art that Sipi and her fine team have enabled. And so we're very grateful that the Faulkners could be with us tonight. And thank you so much for joining us. We hope you'll have a wonderful time and stay with us. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are moving uh, right along. Um, we have a wonderful um, person joining us, uh, a student at uh, the Hamilton Grange Middle School in Harlem, uh, which is uh, a, woman, a young lady named Nicola Worthington. And you might know that Hamilton Grange Middle School is a, a wonderful site where City Arts has done an incredible mural. So when you have some time, please visit either the website and when it's safe again, get to Harlem and see and see the middle school. So welcome Nicola Worthington. Jesus. Good morning. My name is Nicole Worthington from Hamilton Grange School. I am from I am in the City of Arts after school program with Mr. Sean Carson. He is a very good art teacher. He has taught us about primary colors and how they work. We have lots of fun working on art pieces. Sean Carter has also taught us about this person named Van Gogh. He is a very famous artist. I am very excited to go back to school next year and work on the mural after the coronavirus. I would like to congratulate Mr. Lev for his well-deserved award at the gala. Thank you, Mr. Lev, for being a really, really good leader. And thank you, Mr. Carter. Carter for being the best art teacher I've ever had. Thank you. Uh, that was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Nicola Worthington, for, for joining us. Um, Nicola is talking about a very important person tonight, our honoree, uh, Benjamin Lev. Uh, Benjamin Lev began his career with Teach for America, the innovative uh, nonprofit that is reforming and changing the way public schools run. Today, uh, Benjamin Lev is an educator and founding principal of the Hamilton Grange School in Harlem, whose work to integrate arts and education helped the school gain recognition as the number one middle school in the state of New York during 2017 through 2018. Through his leadership, the Hamilton Grange School is only one of four schools identified in the entire U.S. as a school to learn from by Teach for America. So without further ado, please welcome our second honoree, Benjamin Lev. Thank you, Tim. Um, and thank you, Sippy and City Arts for uh, affording me the opportunity to speak tonight and honoring the work that we do at Hamilton Grange. James Baldwin, uh, who was born and raised just a few short years from school, said, the world changes according to the way people see it. And if you can, even by a millimeter, the way people look at reality, then you can change the world. And at Hamilton Grange, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to alter the way our young people see the world. We know that the ages of 11 to 15 are the second largest window of development during our lives as humans, after zero to three. And when our young people come to us as 11-year-olds in sixth grade, they, they are tasting independence for the first time in many ways. They're no longer... Uh, on the school bus to school. They're no longer being walked to school by their parents. And so they're figuring out who they are, who they want to be, how they want to be seen. And it is at this time, as they're forming their identities and they're becoming curious about things and learning about what they're passionate about, that we have the opportunity to really come in and support them in that way. We also know that in our development, cognitively, that this period of growth is, is really indelible. The things that we're passionate about in middle school are the things that we will continue to be passionate about into adulthood. For instance, 
I remember the first time I went to an art museum. My mom took me to the Art Institute of Chicago and I was blown away um, by the, the building itself, by the pieces of work that I saw. And that moment is ingrained in my memory. And I started loving art that day and I continue to love art. And one of the things that, that we hope to do at Hamilton Grange is provide similar opportunities to our students. We have 21 different electives that students can partake in during the day. That's not counting the myriad opportunities they have after school. Um, and art has always been one of those ways that our students have been able to express themselves, create their identity, and also shape their community. City Arts and, and Hamilton Grange have been in collaboration since the school was founded six years ago. And City Arts has helped to, to literally shape our space. We have several murals that our students have, have worked on in collaboration with City Arts that are adorning our school and have really given students an opportunity, not just to assert themselves and their identities as artists, but again, to create a community within our building. So as Baldwin said, the world changes according to the way people see it. And if you can alter it, even by a millimeter, millimeter, the way people look at reality, then you can change the world. So I sincerely hope that you will continue to support City Arts today so you too can help these young people alter their world. Thank you. That is great. And um, uh, Ben, am I, am I correct that uh, Teach for America has, has, has been a central part of your career? And uh, my son just ran in, so he wanted to say hello. Yeah, they have, um, they've, they've provided opportunities that, that dad, dad, dad. We, we wouldn't have had. Dad, dad, dad. I think he's the most entertaining person we've had on the show. Does everyone agree? <laughs> he's great. We need, we need more of him. We read on your bio, by the way, Ben, is it true that you're the son of a devout Catholic mother and an observant Jewish father? Is that true? It's true. Yeah, yeah. It's true. I'm, I'm the same way. So as half Catholic and half Jewish, it would be fair to say you're a cashew. <laughs> yeah, well done. Um, you're a principal. Maybe you can help me out with this. My son's in fifth grade. I got a call from the fifth grade teacher that said, uh, Mr. Halpern, this is Mrs. Moskowitz. I said, yes, I know who this is. She said, there's a problem with your son. I said, a problem? What's the problem? She said, well, your son is the class clown. I said, yeah. Is he funny? She said, no, no, he's not. I said, you're right, this is serious. Send that kid home immediately. My son comes home and I said to him, what were you doing? He said, I was doing some bathroom humor. I said, bathroom humor, you're in fifth grade now. Haven't you moved on to celebrity impersonations, psych gags, prop humor? You get to your room, you write better material and don't come out until you have better jokes. Is that good parenting or? We'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but listen, seriously, you're doing a wonderful job and we're so grateful for you. And what you said about, about art being a real, a real catalytic factor at your school is terrific. And do the kids enjoy the murals that City Arts has uh, really championed up there and, and painted? Are they beautiful? Because I've yet to get there to see it. Yeah, yeah, they are. And, uh, you know, when we, when we founded the school six years ago, we were coming into a building where, where a school was already existing. So we are mm -hmm. in a co-located space. So when <coughs> City Arts came in, we literally, we created a mural that was approximately 300 feet long um, that adorned our entire hallway. Uh, and it was really a way of, uh, of our students, our founding class of students, to identify this space as their own and to start creating a community within a larger community that, that they were shaping. Okay. Well, that's, that's wonderful. And we're so, we're so grateful for you. Keep up the great work. I will tell everyone that as a high school principal, um, Ben's job can be 24 seven if he lets it, but he's got to take care of his own family as well. But that kind of passion and that kind of drive that comes from Teach for America to running a startup school is no joke. This is a real labor of love. And we're so grateful that you could make some time for us. And I know that Sippy just adores your school and the children. So keep up the great work. And we hope we'll see you again soon, okay? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Now, I want to take a few minutes to encourage everyone to visit our websites. Um, and I would like to highlight, if I may, some of the work that we have there for you. So let me give you those, uh, 
those websites again, and we might actually uh, chat them out to you. But the first one is um, the Artsy auction link, which you may have. It's A-R-T-S-Y dot N-E-T forward slash auction forward slash city arts dash benefit dash auction dash 2020. And there you will find some incredible work. Uh, let me tell you about that. Um, there's a Monarch Butterfly 2020, a beautiful inkjet pigment print by one of our honorees, Agnes Dennis, courtesy of the artist and Leslie Tonkanow Gallery. Um, please enjoy that work. Secondarily, from a world-renowned architect, uh, Daniel Libeskind, Corona House 2020, a unique print and a digital drawing. He's also a City Arts Advisory Board member. I personally love that one. You might have to beat me to that because if my wife doesn't kill me, I might bid on that and I might take that one. Um, uh, Ponte Sant'Angelo, a, a rap screen print from the recently departed great artist, Christo, who is a dear friend of Sippy's and a longtime supporter of City Arts. We extend our condolences to Christo's family and we're grateful yet that we have his work to live on to benefit the children of City Arts. As well, we have a, uh, uh, an archival pigment print from Monica uh, Warsaw. Uh, I'm sorry, it is, it is, uh, the print is Monica Warsaw. It's, uh, it's an edition of 30 by Alex Soth, made it particularly for City Arts 30th anniversary gala last year in collaboration with the artist, in collaboration with the artist. Um, and he is represented by Sean Kat, uh, Kelly Gallery and in collaboration with the Benefit Print Project. So take a, a minute or two, if you would, to look at that website while we get ready for the next part of our night. Take your time, we're not going anywhere. And let me also remind some of you, there's yet a second website, acelevents.com uh, forward slash city arts virtual gala. There you will find some wonderful trips and auction items. And remember, that auction link um, expires at the end of the event tonight, so you must, you must bid soon. The arts auction link will be going on for another day or two beyond tonight's event. So uh, I apologize, the, the, uh, uh, both the cell events tomorrow at 5 p.m. expire. Thank you for the correction on that. Um, and we're doing, a, uh, uh, we're just so happy to be here for these kids. Next up, uh, I'd like to introduce our, our, uh, our next honoree. Our next honoree uh, who is unable to be with us in person tonight is Agnes Dennis, who is represented, Agnes Danes, I apologize, who is represented by Leslie Tonkanow, uh, her art dealer. Um, our artist, Agnes Dennis, is an internationally renowned artist and writer and educator, particularly known for her ecological and philosophical concerns which has made her a pioneer of the land art movement. Her recent retrospection exhibit at The Shed, Agnes Dane's Absolutes and Intermediates, was the most comprehensive to date of her work in New York. As I say, her dealer, uh, Leslie Tonkanow, will, will, will join us now for a few moments. So welcome, Leslie. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much for inviting me to uh, read this uh, letter that Agnes wrote thanking everyone for um, making her an honoree at this important event and um, so the, I will read you um, Agnes's words and also want to congratulate the Faulkners and Benjamin Lev on being honored tonight. Um, this is Agnes and her last name is Dennis so you got that right the first time. Thank you. Thank you, Zippy and City Arts, for making a difference in Art Award and for all who are attending this virtual gala, AR or VR or otherwise in our social media integrated world. I wrote 50 years ago, making art today is synonymous with assuming responsibility for our fellow human beings. In our time when meaningful global communication and intelligent restructuring of our environment is imperative, Art can assume an important role. It can help humanity heal itself, see the ills of the world, take the good and plant it in the fertile soul of people. I plant more than just forests and wheat fields. Today, a lack of intelligent self-evaluation and failure to understand one's contribution to society 
have led to jaded values and misguided priorities. The individual needs to regain respect and integrity that stems from self-esteem based on an understanding of his value to become more altruistic and less greedy, therefore more willing to make sacrifices for the whole. Unlike ants and bees whose behavior is programmed, humans need to appreciate, understand, and take pride in their role and value to society, which creates a healthy feeling of self-worth, a love of self, and of everyone else. <coughs> choice. I want to thank Zippy and City Arts and all those involved for honoring my work. Keep creativity alive. Keep creating. Agnes Dennis. I, I, I think it sounds like Agnes Dennis is a woman and an artist for the ages. Her values sound like they are transcendent and universal and it sounds like the type of value system that so many of these young people that are part of City Arts could really be inspired by. I mean, that's a really beautiful sentiment, and, and we're sorry she couldn't be with us. Thank you. She's very honored to be honored. <laughs> thank you so much. Honored um, to speak on her behalf. Thank you so much for, for speaking on Agnes Dennis's behalf, uh, Leslie. Um, I want to welcome our, our next guest. I'd like to tell you about a, a wonderful, uh, we're, we're going from the stars with Agnes Dennis to another part of the stars with, uh, with astronaut Leyland Melvin. Um, Leyland is one of the most important astronauts in the history of the country. And if that's not exciting enough, he's happy to join us at City Arts this evening. I'd like to tell you a bit about his background. Um, uh, he worked at the NASA Langley Research Center in the areas of non-destructive testing, creating optical fiber sensors for measuring damage in aerospace vehicles, resulting in publications in numerous scientific journals. At a certain point, uh, Leyland Melvin hung up his space boots. He was appointed head of NASA education and served as the co-chair in the White House Task Force Federal Coordination in Science, Tech, Engineering, and Mathematics, or STEM as we all know, developing the United States nation's five-year STEM education plan. Leyland was the U.S. representative and chair of the International Space Education Board, a global collaboration on learning about space, and has used his life story as an athlete, astronaut, scientist, engineer, photographer, and musician to help inspire the next generation of explorers to pursue STEM careers. I'm proud to welcome Leyland Melvin, who by the way holds not one, but four honorary doctorates for a service in education, the services in philanthropy. Please welcome Leyland Melvin. Oh, I'm sorry, he has a clip. He's joining us by clip. And an, and an apology from Leyland that he isn't able to join us in person, but here is a clip from the wonderful Leyland Melvin. We'll be coming up momentarily. Uh, we do not, am I, I'm sorry, I may have made a mistake. We do, we, Leyland has been unable to join us. We thought we would have a, a clip, but instead in Leyland's honor, we will be introducing the Hamilton Playground, one of uh, City Arts's um, uh, real seminal projects. So without further ado, the City Arts Hamilton Playground video will be joining us shortly. We really believe that the murals created in parks, in playgrounds, in schools, or just community walls empower them and build the self-esteem of the youth and the community members that work with us. This really is the best of all town Manhattan, uh, brought to life visually by the very young people who live here. Uh, I couldn't be more excited. It, it's owned by the neighborhood. That's what's wonderful. Yeah, I, I'm so happy and proud that I was able to be part of this. It's, it's been a wonderful experience. This beautiful mural was an idea of one of the children going, well, we're like trees, aren't we? we if we are here long enough, we really stand uh, as a presence. I think that's, that's one of Let's use that. And uh, then we did it. The important thing I learned was Kind of like mixing colors and finding the correct color to use for the trees in the river so i kind of had to like ask hugo and then he teach me what i need to do where i'd like put the colors together 
you can't help but smile uh, and you look around and, and no matter who you are and where you're from, whether you're a community member or not, um, you know, it kind of brings everyone together and I think that's the point of art. Um, and then when you have an organization like City Arts that brings New York City and arts together, I mean, it's it's win-win uh, in every uh, aspect of, of a mural like this. We're very excited to be here on behalf of my executive director, Dr. Kofi Boatin and the West Harlem Development Corporation. We're so thankful to be a part of City Arts and the wonderful work that you're doing in Harlem, in West Harlem in particular. We're so grateful to have been a partner with you all, a collaborator for the last two years. And to be on site, on the scaffolding, I feel like it's a rite of passage. We're authentic now. We really have earned our stripes. Uh, I remember one of the uh, fellows that came over and said, oh, I love what you've done with this. I wish it would have happened many years ago. And I've been here all my life. Uh, so he was pretty excited about that happening. And when I said, oh, we're going to do that one and that one. And he goes, this park is going to be something else. And it, it has become that. I was a little skeptical doing this at first, but after I was doing this every day, like talking to you guys, doing the work, I just, it was the best experience of my life. That was uh, beautiful. Let me just, uh, sorry folks. That was incredible. That was the Alexander Hamilton uh, playground. It's, it's a wonderful playground. And you know, I, we talked a little bit earlier about, about uh, how Manhattan in particular, but other parts of the five boroughs have sort of become feeling like a, a shopping mall in some way. But, but, but CP and City Arts and the team and the children and the young people have really brought back such a, a rich cultural fabric to the city. They make this a more beautiful place to be. And they, and they create wonderful opportunities for, for children. As CP says, and I will paraphrase this because she's more eloquent than I am, uh, children who are creating are not destroying, right? And so um, I've, I've only had the privilege to meet CP very recently, but, but, but here's, here's what I know. She's the founder and executive director of, of City Arts. She created the organization in 1989. She has devoted herself tirelessly, night and day, to, to bringing youth together with professional artists here in New York City and throughout the world with a focus aimed at the voices of our children and our youth, empowering them to create murals and mosaic projects that activate their imagination and that really enable them to make a difference in the world. I will, without further ado, uh, introduce our impresario and esteemed founder, uh, C.P. Ben Chaim. We're so grateful that you could join us tonight. And thank you for all that you're doing for the city and for the world. I'm not sure we can mute hear myself. So. Okay, so I unmuted myself. <laughs> These are challenging times. Yeah. So on behalf of City Arts Board of Directors, I welcome you all. Thank you so much for attending City Arts first virtual gala. And I must say, uh, it was challenging, it is challenging, but with great board and staff, we're here uh, and we're making it happen. Uh, thank you so much, our wonderful honorees and our kids uh, everywhere that are staying with it and moving on. Isn't it amazing how we can adapt in the most crazy circumstances, we can still be innovative and interconnected at all times. So we just move on. Our youth around the world continue to create pieces for peace and really building the cultural bridges through, throughout the world in 100 countries right now. Here, our kids are working remotely with our uh, artists, and they're hoping that um, one day soon, hopefully in September, their imagination with their heart from home will create these murals on the walls of their schools 
hopefully in September. So let's, let's look forward to it. Um, and of course, I must say, you are the wind and the fuel beneath their imagination and beneath their wings. And you can do it, you can help us because we are truly interconnected. I must say, um, Corona time has good things about it as well. It's the first three months that I had dinners every night with my two boys, my son Yori and my personal artist Ziggy. And that wasn't happening in our house for almost 31 years. If we had one or two dinners at night, it was wonderful. Well, now it's every night. So I bless at least that part of a good thing that happened. And my son just asked me recently, so why do bad things have to happen in order for good things to come out of them? You know, maybe this time we can break this vicious cycle or circle or whatever it is and change the way we behave. And good things can happen because of good things that came before them. Let's think about it and let's hope that with all your help, with caring and daring enough, we can all make a difference in the world and in our lives and our kids' lives. Really? So thank you for being here. Thank you to all for all your help. We need you every day going forward to help the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. And have a great night. That is great. I, I just have a quick question for CP. What, um, what do you view as the challenges now moving forward when you think about the challenges that you started this beautiful organization? What do you see coming up for the next year or two that we can get excited about to raise some money around? Well, I must say challenges are in with every project. Every project is a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. And as soon as we will bring all the pieces together, we will be able to make it work. And I believe if we are healthy and hopeful, we can overcome anything that is given or coming our way. And these projects, they mean so much to the kids. I mean, I've seen them out there. I've seen the kids painting. They're just, they the children are so grateful. It seems like we get more out of giving to them than, than, than even they do. I don't know. Yeah, it, it brings the community together. It brings the, the neighborhood together. And just imagine, okay, going to school every day and coming back from school, seeing the work that you did, you straighten up, you're proud of yourself, you move on the right uh, way and in the right direction. And with good people like you, we can make it. 300 more coming up. That is fantastic. So I want to remind everybody that our goal tonight is $180,000. And I know with your help, we're going to get there. And I'll tell you, if we get there, we're at $70,000 so far. We can create six projects, similar to the ones you've been hearing about tonight, the Hamilton Grange project. That's what it costs, but the, but the investment in the children and the investment in our own community is tremendous. So buy the Christo artwork, buy the, the, the Agnes Dane, Dane's work. It's, it's incredible work. I'm going to buy something myself. Um, moving right along, because we respect all of your limited time, and we're so grateful you could join us tonight. Um, we are going to have a toast. Uh, we're going to have a drink to peace uh, wines by Spanish palate. 
Uh, Spanish palette, you will see in our online journal, which is going to come to publication very soon. And we apologize, we don't have our online journal for you yet, but we will. Spanish palette is a collection of wines that uh, CP has there from small independently owned wineries. The team at Spanish Palette took a look at over 100 wines from 20 regions and exports them to 40 countries around the globe. Spanish Palette has created four unique wines, each of which carries a piece of artwork created during City Arts Pieces for Peace project. Proceeds from the sales of Spanish Palette tonight will help fund the continuing endeavors of City Arts. So drink up, enjoy Spanish Palette, and remember, the more you drink, the funnier I am. <laughs> and I won't let you go home till we reach goal. Now, um, we have a video from Spanish Palette, which we are queuing up to play for you now. Bear with us and have a glass. It's coming up in a second. The world is full of wonderful people, but sometimes we are blessed with the opportunity to meet a truly remarkable person that is making a real mark on the world we live in. I was blessed with such an opportunity when I met CP and her beloved City Arts Project. We immediately knew that we wanted to help, so we set about creating a unique range of delicious wines for the City Arts cause, joining together with some of our favorite farmers from all around Spain. I was born and raised in the UK, but I was lucky enough to find my destiny here in the vineyards of rural Spain. I knew immediately on arrival that this was my place and that I was brought here to help the farmers and the many families who have been growing amazing quality grapes for centuries. This project allows us to help our local Spanish farmers while providing support for city arts. This crisp, fresh and fruity white is made from the Videjo grape, one of Spain's best white wine grapes. It is full of bright tropical fruit flavors and offers such an intense explosion of flavor on the palate. It comes from Leon in the northwest of Spain, where the climate is a little cooler and helps maintain the beautiful acidity, which adds a lovely layer of freshness. We made two red wines to join the range, one from an international varietal Syrah and the other from Spain's most loved red grape, Tempranillo, both grown in central Spain where it is extremely hot and dry in the summer. It is almost like growing grapes in the desert, but the vines are hardy and very clever products of mother nature and have worked out not only how to survive, but thrive, producing some of Spain's best grapes. With this, we raise our glass to our friends at City Arts, and we look forward to sharing a glass of lovely Spanish wine with you in person as soon as we can. Cheers, everybody. Great. That was okay. great. That was great. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting myself a bottle of Spanish palate, which will uh, complement my my trips to Joe's Pizza on Bleecker Street and my ordering in Chinese food whenever it's safe to go out again. Um, so we're coming down the home stretch, folks. I, I do want to uh, remind you that in addition to CP, uh, some of our other honored guests tonight, I did not have the opportunity to introduce the board yet of City Arts, but other folks that are with us tonight, the terrific chair, Cindy Aprigliano, uh, Oren Cohen, our secretary, Fran Schulman, our treasurer, Vera Sun and Stephen Bitterman, and if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but we're so grateful that, uh, that they could all join us tonight. Um, and a couple of parting thoughts. We, uh, as I say, we are putting together a, a journal of tonight. If you have thoughts that you'd like to have included in our journal, we encourage you to send an email, and I'm gonna give you an email address. It is gala at cityarts.org. You're welcome to send us some of your inspirations or thoughts. I personally am very grateful for, for, for Sippy and all of the friends we, that have been with us tonight, uh, Rita and Waldo, Leslie, Mark Morial, Ben, all, all the kids. It's really, um, it's such a wonderful inspirational organization for me. It makes, makes New York, and not just New York, but it makes our world such a better, such a better place. And, and, as Co and as CP said, we are overcoming many challenges, many challenges. This is the first virtual gala 
and we hope the last virtual gala that City Arts will ever do. We hope next year we're going to be back live and in person because it's so much more fun. But you know what? We we inspire we're inspired by CP's positive energy. We made we made the best of everything, and so another day. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts they'd like to share with us before we wrap up? Or feel free to jump in. Otherwise, the kid is on. The witch. Okay, uh, team. We have one more video of the kids. Oh, we do. I'm yes. sorry. Let's find it. Yeah, ben, he has have that. Ben, yeah. Ben, yeah. Some of the things that we do in art is sometimes we'll paint and like my favorite thing was when we used watercolors and we once did origami. And why I believe that art will change the world because art is also another way that people use to communicate themselves because sometimes words don't describe things as well. Therefore, art would be an easier way to describe it. And if in the world, if we have more communication, everything will go along much more smoothly because you don't want to see a slide with no images or colors or font, fancy font. Because I would just like, it would also just make you really bored. Because art also adds, like, pizzazz, fiesta. And, and overall, if we have, like, a better connection, a lot of our problems in this world go a lot smoother, and it'll be much easier to, well, communicate with each other. And that's how I think art will change the world. So beautiful. Wonderful. So, such a beautiful, simple idea. Um, this child, this young person, and CP, and all of our friends, we're all changing the world right now. So, I have not checked lately what we've done, but I hope that you'll remember that our, our auction links will be up for the next couple of days. And I hope that when the event is formally over, you will certainly get on the, uh, the internet and the web and click those links and buy some of the beautiful work that we have. Um, we're going to start to wrap up the night, but encourage you to remember that uh, uh, City Arts is not done with you, not by a long shot. We want you to visit the Artsy website and the Sound Auction website. Um, I just think of any last parting remarks, and then we're going to put on some wonderful music and, and say goodnight. Um, we we'll just say, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for, for joining with us. And remember, folks, um, you know, pandemics are tough, but Social distancing, not all bad. My wife says it's better for our marriage. I don't know. Go figure. Is she trying to tell me something? I, I don't know. Um, so, so thank you all so much for joining us. Let's raise a glass. Uh, God bless. Enjoy City Arts. And we will see you again very soon. Uh, we will cue the music. And Duke Gallington or Louis Armstrong are going to take us out for the night. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you all.